Ferrari is without a doubt my favourite team, and that's why I wear this, but not after Canada. Ferrari's performance in Montreal was a disaster, and also this Hollister McLaren match just looks really cool. But let's discover why Ferrari were an absolute atrocity to Formula 1 in Canada. I think the main problem with Ferrari actually started in qualifying, and not in the actual race, because they came 11th and 12th. The team wanted an aggressive tyre strategy compared to the more relaxed runs on other teams. This really backfired when we looked at the weather conditions. Conditions. Constantly raining and constantly windy, which basically meant that the track was wet before qualifying, and so the aggressive tyre strategy that they were hoping would work, it backfired on them. It ended up meaning that they lost a lot of time around the corners and couldn't keep up with the other team. So both drivers just didn't make it into Q3 because of this reason, and this obviously put them at a huge disadvantage for the actual Grand Prix team. During the actual race, unfortunately, Charles Leclerc was experiencing severe engine issues in the car, as we all saw. It turns out the car's engine issues were actually related to the software rather than the hardware, so there was nothing actually wrong with the physical state of the engine, but rather its coding. Leclerc was losing about 80 horsepower, which resulted in a severe speed deficit on the straight, really putting the team at a disadvantage, comparing there are a lot of straights in Canada. I mean, if we were to just have a look at Canada here, this is a straight, obviously we have the Wall of Champions there. Their tyre strategy just would not work in qualifying for this reason, given the amount of straight. But it also meant that because of the engine issue, Charles was losing 80 horsepower on these straights. That puts him at such a disadvantage against much more fierce cars like the Red Bulls and the McLaren. Do you like this view better or this view better? If you let me know in the next video I make on Formula 1, I will use the view that you've suggested. Anyways, back to Canada. Now let's talk about Carlos Sainz, because that's a whole different story. Sainz's Ferrari crashed into Alex Albon's Williams. That caused Alex Albon to go directly into the wall and causing him to DNF. Carlos Sainz had severe damage from the incident and also DNF. This means that there was a double DNF for the team for the first time since Azerbaijan of 2022. The team principal, Fred Vasseur, described the race as an absolute catastrophe for Ferrari. Despite them actually being quite confident about their, a, about their race pace, a combination of poor qualifying and strategic mishaps and also some mechanical failures led to the ultimate demise of both Ferraris. Ferrari's case though, it's really bad because Ferrari were on the chase for the championship in both the drivers championship and the constructors championship with Charles Leclerc leading just behind Max Verstappen and he could have secured the championship. Ferrari were also not too far behind Red Bull and they could have also secured the constructors championship. I'm not saying they won't now but they're set 25 points back on the drivers championship and 25 points back on the constructors too because Sergio Perez thankfully didn't get any points so this is good news for Ferrari as well. It does mean that it will be tougher to chase Verstappen in the future and to chase Red Bull in general for the championship but it's still of course possible if Ferrari keep up their game in Spain and the rest of the Grand Prix this year no more double PNFs we could still do it. And Vasseur also said this said he's going to have deep analysis of the issues that went wrong of course and try and rectify them before the next race. Like I said, Max Verstappen took the lead for this race and won. It was quite sad to see Lando Norris not winning another race because unfortunately by the time the safety car had happened, he'd passed the piss entry, meaning that he couldn't pit like all the other drivers and this caused him to lose a lot of time on track. However, Mercedes, for the first in a long time, scored some points and even a podium. This is impressive and McLaren continue their lead into chasing for the constructors. Even though it might not happen this year, it shows that they are pushing their game and by next year we could be seeing another McLaren championship. Who knows? But it's working and they're getting podiums consistently. Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris are doing very well competing against the likes of Sainz, Leclerc and even Verstappen sometimes. But I'd say that's about it. So we've seen exactly what happened on Ferrari's end and unfortunately why it led to a double DNA. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do leave a like, subscribe and let me know if you like this kind camera position again or perhaps this one that's gonna be all from me today thank you so much for watching please make sure to like subscribe and smash the bell in this video as you can see down below I've also added a join option this is a paid membership for people who want early access to videos features on my channel and more you can also see exclusive videos on the channel I'll be talking a lot about F1 and some other things that I like doing there a lot of aviation stuff so if you are interested the Tifosi option is just a pound 99 a month and deluxe Tifosi is three pound 99 a month but if that's not what you're feeling of course then that's fine because loads of channels have channel memberships and okay someone keeps following me on this one just subscribing would really help grow the channel as we've recently just become monetized so 
hey, at least I can turn this into something bigger and, and go forward with it. And I will see you. Where Ferrari hopefully will not double DNF and maybe we could see a Carlos victory at his home race.